My name is Danica, I'm a contributing editor at Book Riot, and today I want to talk to you about some of the books out this week. I know I've got big shoes to fill coming in after Rincey, but I've got some exciting books to share with you today, so hopefully you can find one that you're interested in. I am also a co-host on the All the Books podcast with Liberty, so if you want to hear us and the other co-hosts talk a little bit more in depth about new releases, you can check it out there, including some of the titles that I'll be mentioning today. The first book I wanted to share was The Air Revelations of Anne de Burr by Molly Greeley. As a fussy baby, Anne de Burr's doctor prescribed laudanum to quiet her, and now the young woman has to take this opium-heavy tincture every day. She grew up sheltered and confined, removed from sunshine and the fresh air, with only a few cousins to keep her company, including Fitzwilliam Darcy. Throughout their childhoods, it was understood that Darcy and Anne would grow up to marry and combine their estates. But Darcy does not love Anne nor want her. When Anne's father, unexpectedly, unexpectedly dies, she has a moment of clarity. What if her life of fragility and illness isn't truly real? What if she could free herself from this medicine that clouds her mind and leaves her body weak and lethargic? Might there be a better life without the medicine she's told she needs to live? In a frenzy of desperation, Anne discards her laudanum and escapes to London to her cousin's house, John Fitzwilliam, who helps her through the difficult process of coming off of laudanum. But once she returns to health, new challenges await. Shy and utterly inexperienced, the heiress has to forge a new identity for herself and learn how to navigate a season in society and the complexities of love and passion. The once passive Anne becomes a braver woman who must face her domineering mother who wants to control her fortune and her life. So this is a Pride and Prejudice novel. It fleshes out one of the minor characters in the book, Anne, who is Darcy's fiance at the beginning of the novel. Novel, but it also stands completely on its own merits. I think it would be a fantastic novel even if it didn't have the Pride and Prejudice elements. The synopsis doesn't mention that this is also a slow burn lesbian historical romance comparable to Sarah Waters. It manages to be both a Victorian historical novel and have a lesbian drug addict main character with no apparent contradiction between those two. I really loved this. If you like Pride and Prejudice retellings, historical fiction, lesbian historical romance, then I think you'd really enjoy this. And this video is sponsored by Flatiron Books, publisher of The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. After a bad breakup, Tiffany Moore needs a place to live. Desperation makes her open-minded, so she answers an ad for a flat share. Leon, a night shift worker, will have the flat during the day, and Tiffy will have it nights and weekends. In fact, they'll never even have to meet. Tiffy and Leon start writing each other notes, and although they are opposites, they begin to become friends, and then maybe more. So this book asks, what if your roommate was your soulmate? It's a quirky romantic comedy and a feel-good novel about finding love in the most unexpected of ways. So if you're looking for a heartwarming romantic read, try The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. Next I have The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. Meet Jane. Newly arrived in Birmingham, Alabama, Jane is a broke dog walker in a gated community full of SUVs and McMansions. It's the kind of place where no one will notice if Jane lifts the tchotchkes and the occasional jewelry from her well-heeled clients, where no one will think to ask if Jane is her real name, but that all changes when she meets Eddie Rochester. Recently widowed, Eddie is Thornfield's estate's most mysterious resident. His wife, B drowned in a boating accident with her best friend and their bodies were never recovered. Jane can't help but see an opportunity in Eddie. Not only is he rich, brooding, and handsome, he can offer the kind of protection that she's always been looking for. Yet, as Jane and Eddie fall for each other, Jane can't help but be haunted by the legend of his first wife. B was an ambitious beauty with a rags-to-riches story who started her own southern lifestyle brand. How can she, plain Jane, possibly compare? And can she win Eddie's heart before her past or his catches up to them? I really enjoyed Rachel Hawkins' YA books like Hex Hall and Her Royal Highness, so I'm excited to see what her adult fiction is like. This is full of twists and turns, so it should be perfect if you love thrillers or if you like Jane 
Air retellings. Just realized that there are two classic retellings on this list. I guess this is the week for it. And again, that's The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. My next pick is a memoir. It's To Be Honest by Michael Levitin. This is a memoir about one man's strange upbringing in a family fanatically devoted to honesty. He was raised in what he affectionately calls our little honesty cult, and he was ingrained with his parents' philosophy. You do not lie, you do not withhold the truth, and you always speak your mind, regardless of how offensive your opinions might be. For young Michael, this freedom to express himself despite being bullied and ostracized at school was freeing. By the time Levitin was 29 years old, he had told three lies in his entire life. But his parents' enthusiasm for just telling the truth borders on the extreme. After Michael graduated and left home, truth-telling began to lose its luster. In job interviews, on dates, and in social interactions, his refusal to lie or withhold the truth or even just express things more politely than he felt put up a lot of barriers between him and other people. When his only long-term relationship begins to feel poisoned by this honesty, Michael decides he needs to learn how to lie. This is a fascinating memoir that gives almost a sociological approach to communication and lying. For the first part of the book, I was agreeing with his family. We do lie unnecessarily, and there probably is more space for people to express how they're actually feeling. But by the end, I realized that claiming to always be honest can be just as manipulative as straight out lying. This is sometimes painfully honest, but that's exactly what I would expect from someone who was raised in this way. So if you like memoirs about people who have lived unique lives, definitely check out To Be Honest by Michael Levitin. My next pick is a graphic novel called After the Rain by Nettie Okorafor, adapted by John Jennings and illustrated by David Brain. During a furious storm, a young woman's destiny is revealed and her life is changed forever. After the Rain is a graphic novel adaptation of Nettie Okorafor's short story On the Road. The drama takes place in a small Nigerian town after a violent storm. A Nigerian-American woman named Chioma opens the door to find a boy there with a horrific head injury. He reaches for her and his touch burns like fire. Something is very wrong. Haunted and hunted, Chioma must embrace her heritage to survive. I love Nnedi Okorafor's books because they're always so unexpected and thought-provoking, and this is no exception. This feels part horror, part fantasy, but it's more precisely African Jujuism. What really stood out to me is the artwork and what's happening outside the panels. There are these creepy, ornate borders around them. They seem to crowd out Chioma from the story, and that creeping foliage really adds to the unease and claustrophobia of the story. This took several surprising turns, and I couldn't put it down. I do want to give a content warning for body horror, if that's something that you want to avoid. And again, that is After the Rain by Nnedi Okorafor. Then I have a YA pick, Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. 16-year-old Tessa Johnson has never felt like the protagonist in her own life. She's rarely seen herself reflected on the pages of the romance novels that she reads. The only place she's a true leading lady is in her own writing, which she shares with her best friend and number one fan, Carolyn. When Tessa is accepted into a prestigious art school, she is excited to let her story shine. But when she goes to her first workshop, the words are just gone. Fortunately, Carolyn has a solution. Tessa just has to find inspiration in her own real-life love story. And she's ready with a list of romance novel-inspired stats that lead to a happily ever after. Nico, the brooding artist who looks like he's walked off the page of one of Tessa's stories, is the perfect choice for her Prince Charming. But as Tessa checks off each item from Carolyn's list, she gets further and further away from herself. She risks losing everything she cares about, including the unexpected bond that she's formed with Sweet Sam from across the street. She's well on her way to having her own real-life love story, but is it the one she wants after all? I accidentally stayed up until 3 a.m. reading this. It follows and celebrates a lot of romance tropes, that's where it gets the Jane the Virgin comparison, and as Tessa 
points out, there's not a lot of cute YA romances that star a black girl as a main character. But although it has that romance element, it's just as much about her family and her friends and her writing. So if you want a cute romance but with some gut punches and social commentary, definitely pick this one up. It also fits one of the Read Harder 2021 challenges, which is to read a black YA book that isn't about black pain. And that's Happily Ever Afters by Elise Bryant. And lastly, I have a middle grade mystery, and that's Goldie Vance, The Hocus Pocus Hoax by Lillian Rivera. Marigold Goldie Vance lives and works at the Cross Palms Resort in Florida with a whole slew of characters. Her dad, Art, who manages the place, Cheryl, the concierge and Goldie's best friend, and Walter Tooley, the hired hotel detective. Her mom, Sylvie, works nearby at the Mermaid Club. The Cross Palms is holding a magic convention, bringing some of the world's most famous magicians to the resort, including an over-eager part-time detective, part-time magician named Derek Von Thurston. When some of the magic starts to go awry, Goldie and Derek are on the case. Can Goldie uncover the saboteur before the final act goes live? This is a new mystery based on the Goldie Vance comics, and this is the second book in the series, but you can jump in wherever. A big part of the plot of this volume is Goldie trying to set up the perfect first date with Diane, but her plans keep getting interrupted and she gets pulled into this mystery instead. So if you're looking for an inclusive middle grade series or just a middle grade mystery series in general, definitely check out the Goldie Vance series, the comics, and the novels. They're both good. And this title is The Hocus Pocus Hoax. Those are all the books that I have for you today. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in any of these or if there are other books out this week that you're excited for. Until next time, happy reading!